You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network. Fabulous. Live every Sunday with the very latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Amazing. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. And a very good Sunday, fun day morning, everyone. You have arrived at California's number one place to talk about current trends in food, beverages, travel, and tourism. It's our goal each and every week to give you the tools you need to enjoy life's pleasures in a healthy, sustainable, and community-focused manner. Uh, Straight ahead on this hour of the program, Miss Patty Pyburn, who is my co-host for the day and every day. Oh, Patty (laughs) just got her hot chocolate from uh, Pete's Coffee downstairs, (laughs) delivered to her by Cora. Yes, special delivery. I was a little distracted there for a second. (laughs) Cora's our studio producer, always does a fantastic job. And uh, in addition to getting our guests on the line, (laughs) she runs down. (laughs) She was so sweet to get me some hot chocolate this morning. And after the morning I've had, I needed it. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not even going to ask. Don't ask. Patty rolled in the door seconds before airtime. It involved not being able to find a car key. And that's only part of the story. (laughs) Oh, there's nothing more frustrating than that. And it's always when you're late, right? It's yeah, not and when like- it's in the teenage son's pocket, it's even more infuriating. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Enough said. Enough, yeah. So straight ahead on this hour of the program, we are talking with the author of Pandora's Lunchbox. I, lo- I love the name That's of awesome. this book, don't yeah. you? It's a look at how processed foods have taken over the American diet. And uh, as is the case with um, a number of our guests, sometimes I hear an interview with these people on some other source. And you think, I want to know more. I need to know more. And so then I contact them. And that was the case with Melanie Warner, the author of Pandora's Lunchbox. She joins us coming up in the uh, health and fitness segment, which is the, the next segment. Also, tips for planting a spring garden. Now, uh, here's the deal. Our guest is a paramedic firefighter for engine house number one in Mountain View. Um, sometimes paramedic firefighters aren't the easiest people to get a hold of because, <laughs> because they have a demanding job. They don't. Yeah. And we're having that issue this morning. So we may or may not speak with uh, this guy. But mm-hmm. you know where I, I found him? I found him in this uh, magazine that is put out by the California Farm Bureau. And he grows this garden in the backyard of the engine house one there and you know how wow. you know firemen are known for cooking up the chili and all that, that kind of stuff right right because they're just there you know yeah. round the clock and so it becomes a second home and they do a lot of cooking yeah well this guy does a lot of cooking and grows almost all the food they eat <laughs> i love it yeah so i thought that was really cool and i That's thought he could awesome. give us some spring planting tips whether or not that happens <laughs> is yet to be seen we might have to share our own planting tips. so they're like right? emergency garden tips <laughs> Exactly. Right. I like that. All right. Our and that's tra- why I'm here. <laughs> Our travel and tourism segment takes us to Sonoma County, uh, where I have family, mm-hmm. and I grew up in the neighboring Marin County, uh, where a first-in-the-nation law has been approved just this past week. It was voted by the Sonoma County Board of Supervisors uh, to make the roads more pedestrian and bicycle friendly. Okay. And not just pedestrians and bicycles, but you have wheelchairs, you have all sorts of... Other alternate modes of transportation. Right, that mm-hmm. are that need to use the roads as well. A golf car- cor- cart or two, perhaps. Now, I've taken a look at different sources on this, and I, I don't fully understand the law, so mm-hmm. that's why, and I you know want people to understand it, and if this is the first in the nation, then it just might... It could be... Sp- Paving the way, so to speak. I'm sorry. Whoa, what? Where? <laughs> Patty is on a pun roll this morning, but that's fine with me. You know how much I love the puns. Always come late, Patty. Yeah, <laughs> Anthony, our audio guy, says, "Always come late, Patty." <laughs> if this is what we can get out of you. Okay, then uh, next hour we are speaking with. Okay, this is a big, big deal. Mm-hmm. Caltrans uh, is opening a pair of tunnels that will make Highway One far more accessible Mm -hmm. (laughs) year-round. Passable. Uh Yeah. Uh, In San Mateo County. You have a little bit on that coming up, Mm -hmm. Patty, and we'll explain that. And then um, a fewer Fridays. Okay, you've heard of like meatless Mondays and and such. Fewer Fridays. It is a push for you to throw dinner parties and limit the number of ingredients to fewer than the number of guests that you have. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, we'll take a look at why that might be a good thing. The James Beard... Awards are coming mm-hmm. up. James Beard, 
the James Beard uh, Foundation is sort of like the Academy of Motion Pictures. The Oscars of mm-hmm. food are the James Beard Awards. Got it. And there is a laundry list of California nominees. Oh, so very nice. We'll speak with the president of the James Beard Foundation cool. about um, our local stars. Uh, and then craft brewing. The craft brewing industry continues to explode. Mm-hmm. We'll have the latest numbers. But right now, Patty Piper right now. has a look at the news and what is making headlines with food, beverages, and travel. Patty. Well, Randall, since you're mentioning it at the Eat, Drink, Explore news desk on this Sunday morning, we are looking at these stories today. Sugary soft drinks are now linked to roughly 180,000 deaths each year worldwide. A new study shows Mexico has the highest death rate per capita and Japan has the lowest. The numbers directly correspond to the consumption levels of sweetened soda beverages. The research shows in 2010, there were about 25,000 deaths related to the consumption of these drinks here in the U.S. The study's release coincides with a debate in New York City over a ban on the sale of large sugary drinks, which a judge recently blocked. So we will be watching to see what happens there in New York with that uh, soft drink It's uh, They basically took the number of diabetes deaths, Mm heart-related deaths, uh, and then figured out which ones of those would could be connected. Attributed to this yeah. uh, obsession that we have with drinking <laughs> Sugar. <laughs> sugar-filled drinks. Yeah, exactly. So, interesting numbers. Yeah. Well, California has lost a true wine industry pioneer. Mm. The state's reputation as a maker of the world's finest Chardonnays can be traced back to one man, Jim Barrett. His Chateau Montalena Chardonnay won an international wine competition back in 1976 and to the surprise of just about every European wine producer, changed, <laughs> changed <say>. everything. <laughs> one, one judge threatened to tear up her ballot. Uh, <laughs> it was a blind tasting, and she's like, you know. That a, can't be possible. It was a French judge, yeah, and she got very irate about it. Yes. Well, the Hollywood movie Bottle Shock chronicles the exciting moments leading up to that big tasting in Paris. Up until that point, wines from Napa and Sonoma regions were not considered on par with their European counterparts. Barrett passed away in San Francisco last Thursday at the age of 86. A true pioneer. Well, travel up and down the coast uh, highway in Northern California, as Randall was just mentioning, is going to be a lot easier. The Devil's Slide stretch of Highway 1, and what a beautiful section oh, of California sure. to drive through, mm-hmm. but it can be nerve-wracking. Mm-hmm. I've done it in heavy fog. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. No, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> in San Mateo County, it's often shut down as portions of the roadway either fall toward the ocean or rock slides cover it. There are a few spots along Highway 1 where this is a problem. Oh, for sure. Well, starting tomorrow, a pair of tunnels are going to open as part of a Devil's Slide bypass. The project has been many years in the making, and it is a historic milestone for Caltrans. Now, keep it right here, because we will have more on this story next hour. At the same time, we will be speaking with Caltrans spokesman Bob Haas about this major project, why it's so significant. Maybe we can ask him to do the same around Big Sur. Yeah, <laughs> there's another. There, there's another stretch. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's because our coastline is so dramatic, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, of course, this takes the roadway away from the away from the stretch, scenery. But, but we'll trade a little bit of that maybe for safety, right? Uh, Patty, when we come back, you'll give the forecast. I will indeed. All right, stick around, everyone. Just after the break. The forecast numbers from Patty Pyburn, and then also Pandora's Lunchbox. We'll have the author who will tell us how processed foods have taken over our diets. Just about 8.15 the time you're listening to Eatrick Explorer Radio, and we're back in just a moment. California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California, L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com, and enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C-A-L-U-V.com. The California Love Business Recommendation Tool. 
Hey, Farmer's Market fans, listen up, because we're launching a new show just for you. Join the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network each Thursday evening from 5.30 to 6 for a healthy dose of recipe sharing and food news. We broadcast our show live from the historic downtown San Luis Obispo Farmer's Market, but the information shared is designed for anyone who has a love of fresh, seasonal produce and locally made artisan treats. So whether your favorite market is located at San Francisco's Ferry Plaza in downtown Santa Monica, or if you're simply a member of a CSA, you'll love our weekly Market Fresh, available live each Thursday evening at Eat drinkexplore.com and if you miss the show follow our updates on Facebook and Twitter for links to the recipes shared video from the show and other great information eat drink explore radios market fresh helping perfect your california flavor yo what's up this is the black eyed peas and we're here for rad recording artists actors and athletes against drunk driving music is one of the most important things in our lives but nothing is more important than life itself so when you drink and drive, you're risking the life of yourself and the lives of everybody on the road. Don't plan to drive, just plan ahead. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Seems everybody's going organic, including lawn care. Did you know communities across the country are converting their lawns, playgrounds, and playing fields to an organic care program? And it's working. You can safely control weeds and pests and have a beautiful lawn. Your kids, pets, and water supplies will be safer, and your neighbors will be green with envy. Oh, and in the long run, organic lawn care is cheaper than doing it the conventional way. Switch to organic lawn care today. Visit PesticideFreeLawns.org. The folks who brought you this public service message. Check out PesticideFreeLawns.org today. The traditional light bulb, a groundbreaking invention in 1879. Other groundbreaking ideas from that time, the whalebone corset, the pedal-operated submarine, and the two-story outhouse. We've come a long way since then. It's time our light bulbs did the same. Visit energysavers.gov and learn about energy-saving light bulbs. See, these new bulbs are more efficient than the old ones, like a text message is more efficient than a carrier pigeon. They last longer, too. Like how we humans last longer now that doctors use antibiotics instead of leeches. And they cut down on our energy costs. Because in our own groundbreaking age of aeroplanes and moving pictures, we deserve a light bulb that saves us some cash. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. And a very good Sunday morning to you. It is 819 now. Beautiful day once again here in California. And I believe temperature-wise, uh, we were looking pretty... Pretty, Pretty nice. Huh, Patty? If you like California weather. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why most of us are here. Yeah, and who doesn't? 60s and 70s for much of the state today with plenty of sunshine, which we see streaming in the window this morning already. Mm -hmm. There does not appear to be any rain at this point in our forecast no. for the week. We do have a little bit of cloud coverage at a certain point. We can look for highs of 68 in San Francisco today, 72 for San Jose. 68 San Francisco, that's pretty impressive. That's nice, mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful Sunday ahead. So low to mid 60s for Monterey and Santa Cruz. It's warmer south here in uh, San Luis Obispo. It could reach 81, 77 for Paso Robles. And Los Angeles should be partly cloudy in 72. Palm Desert Food and uh, Wine Festival is oh, happening I this know. weekend. I wanted to go to that. We just yes. couldn't pull it off. Beautiful, mm -hmm. uh, sunny and 84 there where that's happening. And you know that dry desert, 84 there is like 75 everywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dry heat. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Patty, for mm -hmm. the uh, forecast. <clears throat> it is time now for our health and fitness segment. And we welcome to the program today author Melanie Warner. Uh, her book, Pandora's Lunchbox, is now out and takes a look at how processed foods have taken over the American diet. Melanie, welcome to Eat, Trick, Explore Radio. Yeah, pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. I know you're in New York. You're running around, and we appreciate you taking a few moments out of your busy schedule to join us. Yeah, happy to. So um, when did this all begin? When did, when did it switch over from 
uh, things grown in your own yard, fresh vegetables at the market, to processed foods really creeping their way into our diets? Yeah, well, processed food uh, really represents a new way of eating for us as not just as Americans, but as human beings. And it really started about roughly about 100 years ago. Mm. This was when the, the processed food industry, um, there was no processed food before that. Most of the things that we see in the grocery store in the middle aisles and at fast food restaurants just simply didn't exist 100 years ago. And it really started with the first wave or one of the first waves of um, urban migration. As people moved to the cities, we needed to centralize food production. People who didn't live on farms, they couldn't grow their own food. Um, and then it really just took off from there and particularly accelerated after the Second World War. I would imagine that it was also sort of a side effect of trying to keep food from spoiling. It was, absolutely. I mean, we, we've had, you know, throughout throughout our human history, we've, we've had all kinds of ways to prevent food from spoiling. Um, things like fermenting food, salting it, you know, we salt meat and salt, salt fish. Mm-hmm. Um, that's been a very effective way, drying it. Um, and so we, once you got processed food, um, as it marched throughout the 20th century, um, there, there were new ways of, of trying to preserve, preserve food, and very often it was through chemical preservatives, so, which was a fundamentally different way of looking at um, saving food and preparing food, if you can even call it that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you can call it that. <laughs> <Right>. yeah. <laughs> I like that comment, Melanie. Um, I was looking at your website and um, reading the little... Um, blurb about your book and it says that about 70 percent of the calories we consume are basically processed foods i am now starting to think about what i eat that seems like a lot yeah it, it is it is a lot i mean that's basically the the majority of our diets coming from these and it's really these highly processed foods as well um and when i was doing the book i i um uncovered quite a quite a lot of things that are processed food that we necessarily don't think of as processed foods i mean oh good because i was i was going to ask you at what point does it turn to like would you consider cheese a processed food um a natural cheese no i mean that would be a minimally processed food okay right i mean it Mm. is you know you have to create cheese but that's cheese goes back for centuries and centuries so um, give us some examples. Cheese, give yeah, us examples, of Melanie, of things that we might not think about as being processed food. Because I want to know maybe what choices I can change. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of my favorites is Subway. I look to it, um, the one the Subway sandwich, the chicken onion um, sweet teriyaki sandwich. And one day I was looking at Subway's ingredient list and I added up all the ingredients and they total 105. Whoa. Which is which is a lot, right? I mean, if if you made this this item at home, how many ingredients would you use? Maybe maybe 12, even if you bought you know, bread at the store. Um, so that's just one example of, of something that people think of. They've always done a great job of promoting themselves um, as a healthy alternative and eat fresh. But when you look at how it's actually made, it's a very um, standard process of industrialized food, and particularly their bread as well. The, the number of ingredients connected to a food is directly related to its level of processing? Uh, sometimes. I mean, it's, that, that's a, generally a good marker. If things have a whole a three-paragraph list of ingredients, um, and a lot of them are things that you don't recognize or things that you don't have at home in your home kitchen or couldn't buy at the supermarket, then it's, that's a good marker for it being a processed food, yeah. So, Melanie, um, I remember the big uh, furor nationwide over pink slime. Um, yeah. Such an appetizing name, too. <laughs> and then when yeah. we You're all... talking about the, the beef, right? The beef. And yeah. and then when we all realized just how much of it we likely had been consuming without even realizing it, it was it well, there was a real big ew factor in that. But what about yeah. liquid chicken? Yeah. Liquid chicken? Liquid yeah. chicken isn't that what they make um, the McNuggets or most most nuggets out mm-hmm. of? Um, are you talking? You're, you're talking about the um, mechanically separated chicken, maybe? Right. That's where they kind of. And then it's like extruded out in a big um, like paste, and I guess uh, probably those dinosaur yeah. formed chicken nuggets are made out of it. I would guess. Sometimes it, it, it'll, it'll be listed on the ingredient list. A lot of times it goes into to hot dogs. Definitely, that's one. Oh, Sometimes right. you'll see it in cheaper version of nuggets. Yeah, it's where they take a uh, basically a, a meat carcass and they push it through a screen and they pulverize it into almost like a smoothie, a meat smoothie. And you can't do it with beef, but chicken is uh, chicken is done this way a lot and it's called mechanically separated chicken although it should just be called a chicken smoothie right oh okay doesn't that sound just 
I think when we educate ourselves about what we're eating, it 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 almost helps you make the right choices because (laughs) of the gross out factor. Melanie, yeah. we've clearly been on a trend toward more processed foods over the last uh, three, four decades. But is that trend starting to subside? And are we are we turning back the clock a little? Um, I think that there is more. There is there are signs that people are starting to wake up and realize that the the journey that our food goes on is important, and it's important to know where our food is coming from. So people are speaking out. Uh, fresher alternatives and healthier foods, and some people are trying to do a little bit more cooking. I saw the other day that um, sales of avocados last year were up 35 percent. That yeah. seemed to be a good a good sign. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're still, as a society, we're still very very reliant um, on processed food and and, and fast food. Um, and th- th- I think the message still still hasn't really reached a wide section of the population. Mm. So, Melanie, um, this may be um, a bit of an extreme comparison, but it just reminds me of that old movie, that Soylent Green, where, (laughs) you know, people couldn't eat uh, normal food anymore, and then they had to come up with this processed form. And, I mean, obviously that's an extreme situation, but... They were eating themselves (laughs) in Soylent Green. Let's hope we don't get to that point. (laughs) For sure. Yeah, there are some scientists working on trying to create meat in a test tube. Maybe you've heard of that. Um... That's something that's a little very far off, and I don't think the food industry is even uh, embracing that because it's, it, it, that has an extreme growth out factor for people. Test mm-hmm. tube meat. Melanie, you were mentioning the number of ingredients at Subway. It just so happens that next hour at this same time slot, uh, we are welcoming a writer on, uh, Laura Rabinovich, with Good. I don't know if you've ever been to the website good.is. But, uh, I, I have, yeah. Okay, so um, they are pushing a campaign called Fewer Fridays where you host a dinner party and the number of ingredients has to be less than or fewer than the number of guests that you have. Uh, based on the whole ingredient uh, thing that you mentioned. So we'll, we'll be speaking yeah. about that uh, straight ahead. And I imagine processed yeah. foods are not recommended. <laughs> no, <laughs> so. no. And it's just those things like Subway. I mean, the restaurants get a pass at this because it's very hard to sometimes find the ingredients. Sometimes a lot of restaurants don't even list them, like Applebee's. You can't find the ingredient list. They won't tell you. Right. So in places like Subway, you have to go on their website and hunt around for it. But it's, it's worth doing it. It's worth taking a look. Author Melanie Warner, Pandora's Lunchbox. Learn more at MelanieWarner.com. Thank you for joining us and enjoy your day in New York. Thank you so much. All right, stick around, everyone. Just after the break, we understand we do have the paramedic on the line. (laughs) He's a firefighter who also is a gardener and will give us your spring gardening tips straight ahead. Some of California's best restaurants, hotels, and homes are perched on steep hillsides with incredible views. But those buildings weren't just thrown there. They were placed on foundations designed and perfected by experts. Throughout much of the Bay Area, those hillside foundations were placed by S.S. Caveney Construction. With nearly three decades of experience dealing with the steepest and most difficult terrain, S.S. Caveney Construction is well known for being the go-to company when quality is your number one concern. Hillsides in California, as you know, are prone to drainage issues that can lead to erosion and slippage. SS Caveney Construction will solve those problems for you. Get a quote today by contacting the team you need. Head to SS Caveney, that's C-A-V-E-N-E-Y dot com and get your foundation placed correctly the first time. Hello, this is Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and I want to tell you about my new favorite discovery, Yosemite National Park. I recently went there with my husband and children, and we walked the trails to see the breathtaking waterfalls, admired the grand meadows, and giant sequoias. But the future of our national parks is uncertain. Many challenges face our parks today, from polluted air and water to development threats outside their borders and inadequate funding to protect our national heritage. That's why the National Parks Conservation Association recently completed a decade-long assessment of the challenges facing our national parks, 
along with proposed actions that will ensure our children and grandchildren will be able to enjoy the parks as we have. Our national parks have inspired Americans for nearly 100 years. As we approach the centennial of the National Park Service in 2016, please join us in helping to protect our national park legacy. Find out how at www.npca.org. What if it wasn't always about getting ahead? What if you didn't care about being on the fast track? What if your career goals were to change? Instead of flying off to the big interview, what if you flew somewhere else altogether? To embark on a different track, to volunteer in ways you never dreamed of, in places you never imagined yourself being. Like a tiny island in the Pacific, barely visible on a map, but where needs are easy to see. Or a village on the African continent, where just a little training in HIV awareness can change the fate of thousands. What if you decided to share your skills with others and help someone else get ahead? Peace Corps, life is calling. How far will you go? To find out more, call 800-424-8580 or visit peacecorps.gov. California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California, L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com, and enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C-A-L-U-V.com. The California Love Business Recommendation Tool. Eight thirty-three. Now the time here on this uh, Sunday morning—a beautiful morning it is. Sunday Fun Day, as we like to call it. I'm your host, Randall White. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network. I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Patty Piper. Good morning, everyone. You can catch Patty Monday through Friday on your local CBS or Fox affiliate. If you live in, I'll here I'll go down the list: Santa Cruz, Monterey, Monterey San, San Benito. Benito. <laughs> San Luis Obispo or Santa Barbara counties. Indeed. Yes. That's a big chunk of California's central coast. It is California's entire central coast. The middle of it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you count Ventura County. But at any rate, uh, yeah, you can catch her in the early morning hours. And then on Sundays, you catch her right mm-hmm. here. She's a very, very busy, busy woman. Yet she still has time to uh, harvest some fresh fruit from her backyard you have a <laughs> Meyer lemon tree. Yeah. And you know what? We ha- we're getting avocados this year. And oh, good. Yeah. Not as many as we had that one year. Remember when I couldn't give them away fast enough? You were enough, crazy but busy with the avocados. Yeah, yeah, but it looks like we're going to have a nice, so I'll be bringing some to you once again. You've never really done the raised beds, though, with like no, tomatoes I'd and like that to. sort of thing? Ricardo and I did that last year mm-hmm. and the year before, and we had we used mulch, or uh, not mulch, but uh, compost, mm-hmm. uh, and it really, they just came out great. You had a lot year. of tomatoes. We had a lot of tomatoes, and I want to expand on that this year Mm -hmm. and i know now's the time now is the time (laughs) spring planting well this past week i caught an article in california bountiful that is a publication put out by i believe the california farm bureau and it's about a firefighter paramedic mike robbins with station number one in mountain view and you always hear about the firemen that are the you know cooking up the chili and typically (laughs) you know typically the the meal associated with a firefighter isn't always healthy, but it's always tasty, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, but in Mike's case, he grows all the vegetables there at the firehouse, and then they have a very, very healthy uh, selection to choose from for mm-hmm. their meals. And Mike joins us on the line right now uh, from Mountain View. Hello, Mike. Hello, and good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Are you on the job right now? 
I am, so hopefully we don't uh, we don't get any emergency calls. <laughs> right. So we'll just keep that as uh, you know as a possibility in the background. If you need to uh, leave us at any time, don't feel we don't, understand. Don't hesitate to just hang up that phone right away. So uh, so Mike, how did you get started on your garden and sort of as a as words of encouragement for people that might be considering planting a garden this spring? Sure. Well, you know, I grew up having a garden around the house with my father, and uh, so it was something that came naturally. But, uh, you know, I, I was kind of basically doing container gardening at the station when I looked over the fence at some property that belonged to the to the station there that was about four foot of weeds. And uh, I thought, wow, what a perfect place to put a garden. So I did some some uh, dirty work and got got in there and pulled out a lot of the weeds and and made that a usable space with lots of sun exposure and now I've got a a flourishing large garden there that really does a good job of producing vegetables and fruit for for the station it's a lot of fun so judging from these pictures that we see in this article um, you have a lot growing there give us an idea what kind of stuff are you growing we're fortunate here in the city of Mountain View that we are able to have a summer and winter garden. In the winter, I typically have a lot of broccoli and uh, kale, as well as onions and and some lettuce. So those those work well in the winter. The hardier yeah. lettuces, like uh, like kale and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of times I'll have to cover up the lettuce to to minimize the the exposure conditions for from the environment. But um, in the summertime, we produce a lot of melons and kale and basil, squash, and, and a lot of heirloom tomatoes. The heirloom tomatoes are a big hit. I love how fast basil grows, and uh, you can cut it back almost all the way down till it's just a nub, make up some pesto, put it in the freezer, and by the time you've used up that, uh, you're, back the basil's to a, back. You're, you're back to a full <laughs> bush, right? That's exactly right, and we had some unique basil this year that was uh, citrus basil. That Ooh, yum! Is is really unique. Uh, small leaves, you you squeeze them between your fingers, and it smells like you've opened up a, a lemon. It's really unique. Wow, a basil uh, that does that. It is basil, yeah, and it makes makes for really cool addition to a caprese salad mm. with uh, traditional Italian basil as well. So a lot of fun. Sounds like you have a, a whole other side career. <laughs> <laughs> so it, m- your uh, fellow firefighters must feel pretty uh, lucky to be sharing a station house with you, I imagine. Well, you know, we, it's funny that you say that. It, it was it was greeted with hesitation initially with uh, the amount of uh, the size of the garden. But <laughs> now I've, I've definitely seen some people that I didn't expect to see out there uh, picking some cherry tomatoes and... <laughs> and getting the bounty as well um so once you once you cross that that border and people see that there's a big difference between homegrown vegetables and store-bought uh it it gets their attention for sure there is a big difference when you taste them side by side for sure you can Mm -hmm. definitely uh taste it at that point do you have any tips for people that are just getting started? I noticed uh, in the pictures that are part of this article, all of your vegetable gardens are raised. I like raised beds. They it allows them to warm up a lot quicker, and the the vegetables like that warm temperature. Mm-hmm. Um, some advice would be not to overwater. You don't want to love them to death. Ah. Um, uh, you want to pay attention to them. There's a lot of pests out there. Be, be aware of the pests. And, and use some kind of organic uh, control for that. Um, Do you start from... I, oh, go ahead. I, I think that uh, and a great addition to a vegetable garden is to throw some flowers in there. It complements it, but nice. it also attracts uh, it attracts bees yes. mm-hmm. that come in and pollinate. And it's a, it's a great addition for, for the eye as well as for production. Yeah, because, Mike, I had a hard time with our uh, zucchini a few years ago. And we put in some lavender, mm-hmm. uh, and 
that really helped a lot. The lavender brought the bees, and then the bees pollinated the zucchini because I was doing it by hand. <laughs> I was down there <laughs> <laughs> trying to <laughs> pollinate. Okay. That's a lot of work. I couldn't it's figure out why these these zucchini would only get like about an inch or so, and then they would shrivel. And I was like, "What is what is going on here?" Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you can. It's it's great that you can get in there and do it by hand and do the pollination, but it's it's great if you can get it to be done naturally and right. And the flower that you chose there is great because it's considered uh, the color that that bees appreciate the most and are attracted to the most is oh. that purple color. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting! I didn't realize that. Do you have any other plants that you would recommend as bee attractors? Definitely, alyssum is a big one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's got lots of different colors: um, the bright white and and the the purplish color that it attracts them. I, I like Cosmos as well uh, for a seasonal flower. I love uh, Cosmos, mm-hmm. but a different kind. <laughs> <laughs> that attracts a Randall. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you can't blend these into a drink, but no. <laughs> uh, they do a good job of attracting bees to the garden, that's for sure. Now, back to the watering. Um, do you do it by hand, or do, have you put a drip system in those beds? How do you how do you do, approach the irrigation? Yes, good, good question. Um, I did water by hand initially, and with that that soft soil, you you notice that uh, the water just ty- tries to move yeah. all of the all of the soil off. And um, I, I've gone to a drip system, and it is really effective. Um, probably about every three days or so for tomatoes, you you just want to give a nice deluge of of water, uh, soak them up really good. And then let them go for about three days in the warm weather, and they like to be stressed a little bit. Mike, does it help to have a small layer of mulch over the soil so that it minimizes the evaporation? I've heard that. I have not practiced that yet. Mm -hmm. Um, I might give it a shot. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Now, a question I uh, have is there's a trend currently to start from seed, uh, preferably mm-hmm. heirloom seed, uh, but a lot of times I get such a late start, I just buy the seed. Go seedlings. to the nursery and get the plants, right? Mm-hmm. Or uh, from yeah. the farmers market. What do you typically do? You start from seed. Last year, last year I did, and it, you, you want to start in January, February, mm. um, with a, a heating blanket and and some good sun exposure. It takes a lot of time. Um, if you have that time, I encourage it because you get to do a lot of a lot of unique stuff and uh, yeah the heirlooms heirlooms are a great way to go this year i'm not going to do that i've been really busy in life um so a lot of gardening i'm doing (laughs) so uh i'm gonna i'm gonna make the purchase from uh love apple farms here in the santa cruz area oh Uh, they've got some fantastic uh vegetables love apple farms that's correct yeah that's it's a great educational facility uh as well as a an active uh, farm, and I've actually, I was a regular old gardener on my own, and I took a couple of classes up there and really, really did a great job of learning more about gardening and increased my, my production levels it, it, very much so. You just gave us a guest idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, Love Apple Farms. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, tune in, Mike, if you want even more information from them, because <laughs> you'll hear it yeah, here. you know, Cynthia Sandberg up there at Love Apple Farms does a great job of, of delivery of, of the, the, the whole course. And they offer all kinds of classes if you go to growbetterveggies.com. Oh, okay, growbetterveggies.com. I'm there. <laughs> I'm on <Yeah>. their site. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take that long. <laughs> they have everything from from beekeeping to to composting to summer and winter vegetable gardening. So That's terrific. Take Mike? a look. It's, oh. it's good times. Mike Robbins, he's a firefighter paramedic with station number one in Mountain View, right there in the heart of the Silicon Valley, growing fresh vegetables that they can prepare and uh, feed there at the firehouse. I think it's fantastic. The article in California Bountiful is linked on our website at eatdrinkexplore.com under today's program summary. Mike, thank you for taking time for us, and we're glad there were no emergencies during the last 15 minutes. <laughs> Lots of fun. Thanks, guys. Take care. Stick around, everyone. Just after this, we're headed to Sonoma County to find out about a first-in-the-nation law.
California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California. L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com. And enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C-A-L-U-V.com. The California Love business recommendation tool. Hey, Farmer's Market fans, listen up, because we're launching a new show just for you. Join the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network each Thursday evening from 5.30 to 6 for a healthy dose of recipe sharing and food news. We broadcast our show live from the historic downtown San Luis Obispo Farmer's Market, but the information shared is designed for anyone who has a love of fresh, seasonal produce and locally made artisan treats. So whether your favorite market is located at San Francisco's Ferry Plaza in downtown Santa Monica, or if you're simply a member of a CSA, you'll love our weekly Market Fresh, available live each Thursday evening at eatdrinkexplore.com. And if you missed the show, follow our updates on Facebook and Twitter for links to the recipes shared, video from the show, and other great information. Eat, Drink, Explore Radio's Market Fresh, helping perfect your California flavor. Seems everybody's going organic, including lawn care. Did you know communities across the country are converting their lawns, playgrounds, and playing fields to an organic care program? And it's working. You can safely control weeds and pests and have a beautiful lawn. Your kids, pets, and water supplies will be safer, and your neighbors will be green with envy. Oh, and in the long run, organic lawn care is cheaper than doing it the conventional way. Switch to organic lawn care today. Visit PesticideFreeLawns.org. The folks who brought you this public service message. Check out PesticideFreeLawns.org today. Across the nation, people are stepping up for their mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, partners, sisters, and brothers. They're leading the way and walking to end Alzheimer's, the sixth leading cause of death in the nation. Together, we can reclaim the future. Walk to end Alzheimer's. Start a team. Join a team. Go to ALZ.org. California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California. L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com. And enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. caluv.com. The California Love business recommendation tool. You've waited all week, and it's finally here. The Eat, Drink, Explore Weekly Travel Deals Extravaganza. 849, now the time here on this Sunday morning, and a very good Sunday morning to you as you wake up to a beautiful day here on the California coast or wherever you may be watching or listening. I am your host, Randall White, joined by Patty Piper. Good morning. And our travel deals is a little bit, it's more the travel and tourism aspect of our uh, segment. Mm -hmm. And we head to Sonoma County today, which has long been an area loved by cyclists uh, because the roadways are, many of the roadways mm -hmm. are rural, especially in the western portion of the county. And uh, Beautiful. Mm, so beautiful. I just spent... Uh, Several days out at Bodega Bay when my <coughs> sister turned, 
I'm not, I'm never I'm sure if whether I can she say this. She just turned an age. She just turned an age. <laughs> she had a birthday. <laughs> so we uh, rented a home out at the coast, and as I was driving out there, I was thinking, oh, I'd love to take some cycling rides out here. You know, from time to time, though, and after 30 years of commuting by bicycle, I have encountered <clears throat> uh, drivers, and I'm a driver too. Is the whole thing I. I drive quite a bit, um, and I understand. I try to understand both sides of the equation, but there have been times when I'm cycling and I haven't done anything wrong, and I have been yelled at by uh, drivers oh, and, yeah. and uh, sort of cut off uh, uh, purposely, you know. And I think you're you really feel helpless because <laughs> they've got a big giant car <laughs> or whatever it might be, and uh, you're there on your bike, so. As I understand it, the Sonoma County Board of Supervisors has passed a law this past week. It's now the first countywide law in the nation uh, to address this uh, this sort of behavior against pedestrians, cyclists, mm-hmm. and other people that use the roads. Uh, joining us on the line to help us better understand this law that has passed is Gary Helfrich with the uh, Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition. I'm getting a little bit of an echo, and I'm not sure where that's coming from. Uh, so I apologize for that. But, uh, Gary, welcome to the program. Good morning. Glad to be on. Yes. And so, um, Gary, explain the law that passed first of all so that we can uh, sort of start from there. Well, yeah, a, a little background is is that Sonoma County, as some of your listeners may not know, has the biggest rural road network in the Bay Area, mm. 1,400 miles of road, and it would go from Santa Rosa, our county seat, to Colorado Springs if you put it end to end. Wow. Um, we we have been, especially last summer, seeing a lot more incidents of very bad interactions between people driving cars and what we call vulnerable users. And vulnerable users means basically everyone who's out there with without a car surrounding them, be they skateboarders, people riding bikes, pedestrians, folks in wheelchairs. Um, that's what we call vulnerable users. And this is the vulnerable user um, protection ordinance and it does three things it first defines what harassment is and what it's not the the example that you gave at at the intro there is it really highlights this being rude to somebody and expressing your first amendment rights might be obnoxious that's not harassment Mm -hmm. Uh, harassment is but the second thing that you mentioned certainly is if you try and run somebody off the road so it gives the court (coughs) guidance It, it it will prevent um, frivolous suits Good. from from making it to court by by saying here's what it is here's what it is not the other thing it does is awards attorneys fees um, to the vulnerable user if if they're successful in their suit and that helps by providing access to justice for everyone because a lot of times the person who's run off the road may not have the means to hire an attorney but the third thing it does this is the important thing is it sends a message to the world, I mean, to everyone, that Sonoma County does not tolerate people harassing vulnerable users on our roads. And, and I use the word people very, very specifically here because the word driver is nowhere in our ordinance. It says a person may not, and then it, then it lists what harassment is. So somebody on a bicycle deciding it's fun to buzz pedestrians on a multi-use path by the beach, that's harassment. As, as well, so, so it, it's it's a little bit different than what people think it is, and and that's that la- one one more point I want to make is we like to remind everyone in Sonoma County we're the only county in California with more registered automobiles than people. It's kind of a bad statistic, but everybody's a driver in this county, and everybody and and then about a third of the people in the latest uh, newspaper poll said that they ride bicycles, but. You're not a bicyclist. You're not a motorist. That objectifies people. You, you're a person on a bike. You're a person driving a car. You're making choices on how to use our public roads. I like that. Yeah. So, Gary, you're not trying to um, target drivers versus bicyclists, or it's just conduct for everyone. But I'm curious to know, like, what might have sparked this? Were there specific incidents? What kind of complaints were being made? Well, we the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition keeps. A, a database of uh, reported harassment incidents. We'll take the report, even if the police won't. Um, 
we've we've been doing this since 2006, and we have 167 incidents that we've logged since then. What really sparked it was last year we had a number of fairly horrible deaths that were not the result of harassment, but the result of distracted driving, which is going to be a bigger campaign for us this year. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it seemed to bring out the worst in people, and, and the incidents of harassment went up, and it finally culminated with just an amazing, stupendous act of of violence against another person where somebody did not like the way someone was riding their bicycle, bumped into them. That person said, the person on the bike said, this guy's crazy, and he just turned around and got out of there. The car turned around, chased him. The fellow on the bike jumps the curb, is next to a golf course and goes down the uh, little pathway for the golf carts just to get away from this guy. Next thing he knows, he hears the car bouncing over the curb, uh, went 150 yards across the fairway and ran him down on the golf course. Wow. That's road rage. That is, well, and, and the fellow had been convicted of road rage in mm-hmm. the past. In fact, his license was suspended already. For road rage. Now, I would like to do a shout out to our district attorney, Jill Ravitch, who prosecuted this as it should be, which is attempted murder. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's he's up on charges for attempted murder. Wow, it obviously is a, a serious thing, and I understand a little more what prompted you all to move in this direction. You mentioned distracted driving, and I think that is also another concern. And I. Th- if I remember right, there's a statewide campaign that's about to be launched targeting. Uh, distracted, distracted drivers, drivers people, people not I guess not only using your cell phone but that's probably the main distraction yeah well that is the main distraction we're we're doing a, a local education and outreach campaign in Sonoma County uh, that, that's kind of an enhancement on on top of what the state's doing you'll notice billboard well I wish there were no billboards in Sonoma County but at least <laughs> if they've got anti uh, distracted driving messages that's great St. Joseph health has been working with us to get these billboards up as you enter Sonoma County. Gary, we have to let you go here because we're out of time, but people can get more information on your website, which is a Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition.org. That's true. Fantastic. Gary Helfrich, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. All right, stick around, everyone, because just after the break, we have a whole other hour full of uh, fantastic guests. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network on this Sunday morning. Make it a great day, everyone. We are back in a moment. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly.
You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. Good morning, everyone. Nine o'clock the time. If you're just getting up and turning on Crush 92.5 FM in San Luis Obispo County, then... uh, a good day to you, and thank you for joining us here on the second hour of the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. I am your host, Randall White, and Patty Pyburn is who you just heard with the breath intake. I was about to say, a truer statement never made. It is a good day. Look outside. It's gorgeous Beautiful. outside. Lots of sunshine. As has been the case for the last several weekends, San mm-hmm. Luis Obispo will be the hot spot in the state. We're looking for a high of 81, I believe. Yeah, that's what the uh, forecast calls for. 81, uh, LA, 72. Mm-hmm. 84 you know, in Palm Desert. 84. Oh, so I guess uh, Palm Desert would be warmer. But as well, far as coastal. We're one of the hot spots. <laughs> yeah. We're, and for the, you're right, coastally, we should be the, the warm spot. For sure. Uh, San Francisco will be nice at 68, but it's no 81. <laughs> Even Paso, where we know it gets toasty, um, is not supposed to be warmer today than San Luis Obispo. No. Paso should top out about in you know the high 70s 77 77 would yeah. be perfect weather for sitting on the deck guess where <laughs> well uh, there's a lot of choices but tell me what you're thinking <laughs> i'm thinking eberly winery in oh. Robles. <laughs> this hour of eat drink explore radio is brought to you by eberly open daily from 10 in the morning until six o'clock in the afternoon with complimentary wine tasting and cave tours now, you can always upgrade from there, you know, if you want to taste some of the uh, high-end reserves and and such, uh, and, you know, and then buy a bottle and mm-hmm. sit out on their beautiful deck overlooking the Paso countryside. It's funny that you say that because it was a lot of fun when we did that a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Anyone watching the Eat, Drink, Explore live video stream on our website right now can see a picture of uh, our audio guy, Anthony. Patty, myself, Ricardo, our social media extraordinaire mm-hmm. person, uh, enjoying ourselves on the deck at Eberly, and the weather was just about... It was glorious. ...what we're expecting today. Yeah. So if you want more information on the wonderful tours there at Eberly, you can go to eberlywinery.com. It's E-B-E-R-L-E, winery.com. My plan for the day is to take advantage of this nice weather to start our uh, vegetable garden. We had a wonderful guest on I the like show. I like that plan. Yeah. This last hour, if you didn't catch it, we spoke with a firefighter, paramedic, from Mountain View, station number one. And uh, Mike was telling us that uh, he puts in these raised veg- vegetable gardens yeah. and feeds the crew there. So I think you, he inspired you a bit. Like you're ready. You're motivated. You're I'm, ready to go. I'm ready to go because I don't want summer to roll around. And then I'm like, why didn't I put in those tomatoes? Mm-hmm. Why didn't I put in that basil? And you had so many last year. They were really, really nice. They were great. In fact, uh, I want to make sure I do this again and grow the little cherry mm-hmm. tomatoes because they're like candy. <laughs> and when I and because they're so sweet and yeah, and they stuff. they kind of make that thing where your cheeks a little pucker do the pucker <laughs> thing and um, and when you just have that taste you want something sweet but you mm-hmm. want it healthy uh, you can d- grapes are good for that cherry yes. tomatoes are great for that uh, any number of uh, a little orange section we have an orange tree in our backyard mm-hmm. too so it's very sweet you got some good stuff going on in their yard in your yard there Randall we do uh. Be, uh the basil we have to replant, um, mm-hmm. but uh, lo- really look for that citrus basil that uh, Mike was talking about. I've seen a citrus version and a licorice version, uh, both with really nice. I think Thai food that licorice basil is used. Okay, look for a couple of varieties when you're at the nursery because I think you'll be happy to to experiment. I will. I, I want to try that. And it just dawned on me. I think I, I think I miss said what I planted to bring the bees to the yard when we were you said lavender I s- oh i did say lavender you said lavender okay good i was thinking that i said rosemary um, oh right we do have rosemary bushes uh which also yeah. attract the bees but yeah. the lavender is like a magnet uh really brings them they to the love yard those flowers my lavender brings all the bees to the yard <laughs> <laughs> hmm, you might be onto something there <laughs> all right everyone 904 the time we're back in just literally 60 seconds with the top of the show and some really great guests coming up stick around can you spare me for 
California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California. L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com. And enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C-A-L-U-V.com. The California Love business recommendation tool. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. Fabulous. Live every Sunday with the very latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Amazing. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. 906. Now the time on this Sunday morning and a good Sunday Funday morning to you. Glad you can join us here for this show, the second hour of the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. I'm your host, Randall White, and we do come to you live each and every day from the heart of California's Central Coast, smack dab in the center of downtown San Luis Obispo. If you haven't visited Slowtown in some time, uh, I recommend you come join the fun. It is a beautiful, beautiful town with uh, great shopping, great food, you name it. Each week, we bring you current information on food, beverage, and travel trends so you can get the most out of your life. And coming up on this hour of the program, we will introduce you to a concept known as Fewer Fridays. Okay, it's it's all about reducing the number of ingredients you use to cook and how the number of ingredients relates to your health and uh, imagine the health of the planet. All right. We'll also introduce you to this year's crop of James Beard Award nominees, many of whom are from California. We have a a laundry list that come from the West Coast. And then finally, the craft brewing industry continues to explode. We'll have those latest numbers. Uh, But first, we welcome Caltrans spokesman Bob Haas to the program to discuss tomorrow's big opening of the Devil's Slide bypass tunnels and it is a huge project that is uh ready i should also welcome to the program uh patty pyburn who (laughs) (laughs) who was uh who stepped out for just a moment we'll say uh (laughs) my lovely co-host i have uh, returned bob welcome to the program you must be excited about tomorrow's big opening oh we're all very excited about this it's uh going to be a tremendous day. We're featuring the um, high school bands from Half Moon Bay and uh, the Terra Nova High School over in Pacifica, and uh, quite a few of the elected officials are going to be there and some invited guests, so it, we're hoping it's going to be a fun day. Now, Bob, as I understand it, these tunnels are the first of their kind to open by Caltrans here in California since, what, the Caldecott? Uh, since the third war of the Caldecott in 1964, so it's been 49 years since we've had a brand new tunnel. Wow. And in that time, we've learned quite a bit about uh, the science of tunneling and also traffic technology. So this uh, tunnel has the latest and, and best in both uh, traffic safety and uh, or traffic safety technology. And also just the whole aesthetics of the tunnel uh, blend in a little better to the hillside. That's right. It, it used to be that, uh, say, with the Caldecott back in 1964, and most other tunnels that were built, say, back in uh, the 1930s, during the uh, 1930s, they wanted to have some great facade up there announcing the tunnel. <laughs> right. And this one, it was decided early on, they wanted to make it look at, to be a natural part of the landscape. So, what the, among other things, what the designers did was that they took, um, uh, took samples of the rock formations uh, that were naturally occurring at both the north and the south end of the tunnel. And then they designed the portals uh, with that textured rock that looks exactly like the, the rock you see in the surrounding area. So, so it we blends sh- in perfectly. We shouldn't expect to see any rainbows like you have over the Waldo <laughs> Tunnel or <laughs> anything like that? No, nothing like that. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. what is the length of the tunnel? They're uh, just over 4,000 feet, both, uh, 4,100 feet. Where does that fall in line with, uh, mm-hmm. well, is that about the, about the same as the Waldo? 
Oh, much, much longer than the Waldo. Oh, okay. The, these are the longest tunnels in California, except for the Wawana Tunnel in Yosemite. Oh. And just slightly longer. But these, of course, are brand new, and they have state-of-the-art technology in them, so they, we're very, very proud of this project. Let's talk a little bit about the why, why these tunnels are going in. Most the, people, the need for them. The need for them. Most people are familiar with the uh, problems around Devil's Slide, but uh, take us through the whole process of how, we're, how we get to tomorrow. Well, the process started almost as soon as the road was built, because it's um, any time you build a road near the coastline, uh, there are going to be, be problems with it. And this one particular spot of the road, known as Devil Slide, has been prone to uh, constant mudslides and rock slides and slip-outs. And if you don't know what a slip-out is, that's when the soil underneath the roadway washes away. So I describe a slip-out as like an Oreo cookie with half the filling missing. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. That's not a good <laughs> and thing. And then no one wants to drive on that. Right, and so we would have to close the, close the road often when that happened, and quite often we had long-term closures that lasted three or four months. And when we did that, that just had a devastating effect on the economies and the local communities. Yeah. So after years and years of discussion, we finally settled on, on the uh, design of the tunnel, or on the option of the tunnel, and we broke ground in March of 2005. We started tunneling in September of 2007. And uh, tomorrow, uh, we reach the, uh, the end of the road. Finally. <laughs> I bet that's a great feeling. Yeah. Oh, it is. Does this reduce the amount of time it'll take to get from, say, Half Moon Bay to Pacifica? Um, a little bit, yeah. Um, it'll be a straighter run. But I would say this tunnel wasn't designed to save you five or ten minutes. It was designed to save you three or four months. Right. You know, you know, oh, because, yeah, that makes because, sense. You know, the whole idea is to not be, it, we want to make sure that the local communities aren't subject to the uncertainties, the very vagaries of this roadway every time you have a winter storm. What's the longest Devil's Slide has been shut down to traffic? Oh, uh, I think like I, nine months or so. I'll have to double check on that one. I well, on the website it says it was in uh, 1995, 158 days, oh. and it cost $3 million to repair. That's I just happened I, to be on the Caltrans website. Bob, that's why <laughs> okay. I have Patty as my co-host, because she <laughs> she's uh, so good about all that. <laughs> very good. And we had another one in 2006 that wasn't much, it was pretty bad also, mm -hmm. or two, 2006, that was also pretty bad too. That was months at a time. And so, say, if you were living in, Paci in Pacifica and you needed to get to Half Moon Bay, you would have to go all the way, the long way around mm -hmm. to get down there. And I've had people tell me that instead of having a commute of a half an hour, they had a two- or three-hour commute. Ouch. Now, Bob, I don't know if the um, geography lends itself to this sort of a project, but in Highway 1 in the Big Sur area is often, you know, in the same situation with slides and closures affecting people there who have to go all the way around, maybe inland up to, like, Highway 46 or something. So is there any plan to do some sort of a Work project like this? Yeah. That, um, I don't know on that one. I I only handle the uh, nine-county Bay Area. So it's out of your area. <laughs> yeah, it's out of my area. But I ask my colleagues in District 5, that's Caltrans District mm -hmm. 5, they, they are centered in San Luis Obispo. So um, I will definitely make a point of asking my colleagues that. I don't think the geography would lend itself the way, because Big Sur, it really... It's just such clinging to the to the um, this, coastline there. Right, the side of those mountains, there's mm -hmm. no sort of inland pass that you could take. Now, the, the pass that you took for this bypass tunnels... Uh, it wasn't just an easy, like, connect up to the tunnel holes. You had to build some pretty expansive bridging, right? Oh, yeah, and the bridges are really uh, remarkable to look at. They, they, have a, they were designed to have a very small footprint um, on the surrounding area, and there are these uh, just beautiful arched bridges that are about 1,000 feet long that come out of the, that connect the, the, the existing highway to the tunnels on the north side. And one other thing I was saying, uh, speaking of the word path, once the tunnel is open... We're turning the um, existing highway, the highway that's no longer going to be in use, we're turning that over to the county, and they and uh, the park system are going to turn it into a bicycle and pedestrian pathway. I love it. That is nice. <laughs> so, I love it. That's fantastic news. Yeah, because a lot of people are saying, yeah, yes, but yeah, it, it, this, the roadway had such a beautiful view So of the scenic. Ocean. Yeah, so scenic. And now you'll be able to enjoy it as, at a more leisurely pace, uh, walking or biking. You won't have to just steal glances at it as you're driving. Bob Haas, Caltrans spokesperson for District 4. Thanks for joining us, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Stick around, everyone. We're back in just a moment. 
California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California, L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com, and enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C-A-L-U-V.com. The California Love business recommendation tool. Hey, Farmer's Market fans, listen up, because we're launching a new show just for you. Join the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network each Thursday evening from 5.30 to 6 for a healthy dose of recipe sharing and food news. We broadcast our show live from the historic downtown San Luis Obispo Farmer's Market, but the information shared is designed for anyone who has a love of fresh, seasonal produce and locally made artisan treats. So whether your favorite market is located at San Francisco's Ferry Plaza in downtown Santa Monica, or if you're simply a member of a CSA, you'll love our weekly Market Fresh, available live each Thursday evening at eatdrinkexplore.com. And if you missed the show, follow our updates on Facebook and Twitter for links to the recipes shared, video from the show, and other great information. Eat, Drink, Explore Radio's Market Fresh, helping perfect your California flavor. Sweet dreams are made of the ends. Who am I to decide? This is Annie Lennox of Eurythmics for Rad. Please don't drink and drive. And don't drive if someone else has been drinking. Thank you. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Rad, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Across the nation, people are stepping up for their mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, partners, sisters, and brothers. They're leading the way and walking to end Alzheimer's, the sixth leading cause of death in the nation. Together, we can reclaim the future. Walk to end Alzheimer's. Start a team. Join a team. Go to ALZ.org. California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California. L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com. And enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. caluv.com. The California Love business recommendation tool. here on this Sunday, fun day morning. Great to have you with us, everyone. I am your host, Randall White, joined by Patty Pyburn. Good morning. Patty, a couple of things, because we ran up against the clock there that Mm -hmm. I just want to mention briefly, and that is that... the tunnels open tomorrow on that stretch of Devil's Slide. At 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Patty yes. found that. <laughs> and so uh, after 11, tomorrow afternoon, you can take a completely different mm-hmm. route. And that, that's just the first of several really large Caltrans projects here in 2013 that will uh, open on Labor Day weekend, the huge Bay Bridge project. Very nice. Yeah, the uh, the stretch from Treasure Island to Oakland, mm-hmm. uh, the old cantilever section of the Bay Bridge, 
I'm not exactly sure how that will come down, but it's at some point that will come down. <laughs> and yeah, uh, I, who knows how they do those feats of engineering, but they do somehow. That'll be something to watch. Yeah, but the uh, the brand new section will will open to traffic uh, Labor Day weekend, and then uh, he mentioned our our guest uh, mentioned the third bore of the Caldecott, which opened in 1964. Mm-hmm. A fourth bore of the Caldecott Tunnel will open in late 2013. There's not an exact date on that uh, from what I can Very see. Very nice. So uh, some huge Caltrans projects. We're still doing things here in California. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're not resting on our laurels. All right, welcome back to the program, everyone. It is a gorgeous late March day here along California's Central Coast. And uh, this is a segment where we want to talk about limiting the number of ingredients you use. We had a guest on the program earlier Mm -hmm. talking about uh, her book, Pandora's Lunchbox. Melanie Warner is the author of that book. If you need any motivation to start looking at the ingredients and using fewer ingredients... Pandora's Lunchbox. (laughs) That will do it. It's a great book to start. You can uh, check out Melanie's uh, website with more information, MelanieWarner.com. But right now, we are speaking about something known as Fewer Fridays. Fewer Fridays. I like this. Yeah, it it was a push for the month of March. But I think uh, even though we're in late March now, you can carry it over to April. And it's all about hosting a dinner party where the number of ingredients you use is fewer than the number of guests. I like it. And it's a part of good.is, which is every day I get my daily good. Uh, it's an email that I get. You know how you get daily emails mm-hmm. that some of them you just they instantly go into the trash? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't want to. <laughs> and you're thinking, how did I get on this list and why and how do I stop it? And then and, you delete. <laughs> and some of them I don't want to stop. It, they're just not interesting enough to check them every day. Yeah. <laughs> the good ones, literally, that I, <laughs> that mm-hmm. I get from good.is are... I, I look at them every single day because they're mm-hmm. they're really inspirational. Joining us on the line right now is Laura Rabinovich. She's a writer for Good Dot Is and knows a lot about this Fewer Fridays project. Welcome to the program, Laura. Hi, thanks for having me. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? First of all, you are indeed. Okay, good. Because <laughs> with the, with the spelling, it could be. Lara, or you know, there's some different, <laughs> different ways you could go about that. Anyway, that way was fine too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. Explain the fewer Fridays push. Well, it's kind of our own version of March Madness. Uh, <laughs> everyone likes a little competition, especially when food is involved. Um, and here at Good, we wanted to encourage people to get in the kitchen and cook. And one of the ways that we think that can be possible is by simplifying the process, by encouraging people to think less is more. So we're trying to demystify cooking and encourage people to cook a meal with less ingredients than number of people at your dinner table. So we're encouraging people to host these dinners. We're calling them Fewer Fridays. And once you've got your dishes prepared, you can send your photos to community at goodinc.com for entry into our Good Fewer Fridays cookbook. So I guess if you're holding a really large dinner party, it's a lot easier. Yeah, (laughs) it is. It is. The challenge is to do it with as few people as possible. Uh (laughs) Um, But it's a challenge no matter the number of people that you have over. Right. Right. You can share the wealth and have a big party, and then you don't have to be so creative. You you can... uh, use more ingredients but i like on this um article about fewer fridays the suggestions that you give for if you have three or four or five people i'm just inspired by the ideas that you're listing here like soft boiled eggs over asparagus brown rice and shaved pecorino like well that's a great one for this time of year because the asparagus are just coming out for yeah. spring and it's a real spring dish so if you have five people you could have four ingredients a vegetarian meal of soft-boiled eggs over asparagus, shave some nice pecorino or parmesan over it, and serve it over brown rice, and you have a meal. If you want to have six people, then you can have five ingredients, and you can have some um, fruit for dessert, some melon. Or if you have seven people, you could have some dark chocolate and some oranges for dessert. You see the, the way it works. Sounds like great brunch <laughs> items, as a matter of fact, mm-hmm. for this yeah, Sunday morning. Yeah, it dinner. Mm-mm. Laura, uh, so it's not per dish, it's per entire meal. It is. It's per the entire meal. And then one of my first questions when I saw the Fewer Fridays push on good.is was, um, what 
counts as an ingredient, <laughs> you know, because I love to season things. So I'm grabbing up in the spice rack left and right. Uh, I would I would quickly go through my list of ingredients just with the seasonings. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we, you know, we, there is a little bit of leeway. Um, salt and pepper, we're not counting as ingredients because those things are part of, you know, almost everything we cook. We're also allowing one natural fat of your choice, so olive oil or butter or, or canola oil or whatever fat you want to use. Um, those do not count as oh, ingredients. Good. Okay. Um, so if you're going to start adding <clears throat> spices, those do count as ingredients. But a lot of food, you don't need to get complicated. What we're trying to do is really encourage people to think about cooking and even hosting a dinner party as something that everybody can do. Buy a chicken. Rub some salt and pepper over it, olive oil, put it in the oven. You have a beautiful main course. And taste the food more naturally mm-hmm. as it yeah, tastes the actual also, food. I mean, one of the ideas behind the project is also to get away from processed foods that have mm-hmm. so many ingredients um, and trying to remind people about whole foods, that foods, foods with less ingredients. You know, another aspect of this, too, I think, Laura, is that... Um, I think I want to have people over. Oh, I don't have time. It's so complicated. I'll have to get so many things and I'll have so much time preparing. And But if you take this approach, the idea of having people over isn't so overwhelming. It sounds so simple and easy. And if you let them know about it, that gives you kind of a pass on what you're supposed yeah. to do. <laughs> And everybody's kind of a part of it, too, because once you put in the idea of a challenge in there, mm-hmm. it kind of makes it fun for everybody involved. So if you even have three people, you could do grilled sausages over sautéed Swiss chard or couscous, which all you need is couscous and water, a little salt maybe, over some roasted salmon. You know, you really don't need a lot. You could do pasta with shrimp. I mean, linguine with, a, with just shrimp and a little bit of chili, you know, chili peppers is a great deal, a great meal. You know. The last thing I thought was going to happen during this interview was my mouth watering. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm getting really hungry now. <laughs> Laura's done a great job of doing that. I, oh, it's really inspiring. What sort, of rea- what sort of reaction have you received? Are a lot of people jumping on board with this? Well, you know, Good is, uh, this is part of our food month at Good, and we're presenting all kinds of challenges and things for our community to do because we're a social network for the social good, and we provide ideas um, and challenges and things for people to actually engage with each other and do. So this is one of our challenges. And we have a, we have a, a, a concept on our, on our website, it's a social network, so we have a, 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 a way that you can participate by clicking do and we have 200 people that have signed up for the fewer fridays project so far Mm. so that just gives you a sense of how many people are excited about this project i really like the work that good is doing i i mean seriously Mm -hmm. i every single like i said every single day when i receive a little message from them it's something that i think well that's good which that's, i'm yeah. sure that's <laughs> how they came, up, <laughs> came up with the name exactly uh well laura best of luck <clears throat> to you i hope this fewer fridays thing is a success and people work it into their daily lives to some degree maybe just considering what it might do is put in people's heads where they consider the number of ingredients they're using exactly and um I wish everybody good luck in their Fewer Fridays challenges. Just out of curiosity, if you were to use Velveeta, how many ingredients does that count as? (laughs) (laughs) Well, we're trying to encourage people to use whole natural foods, but every bought ingredient that you buy, a bought food that you buy counts as one ingredient. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Laura Rabinovich, thank you so much. Thank you. A link to her article and the... uh, the Fewer Fridays campaign is on our website at edrickexplore.com under the program summaries. We're back in just a moment. California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So, during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California, L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com, and enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C-A-L-U-V.com. The California Love Business Recommendation Tool. I 
I'm in almost every school bus and classroom. I go to school with your children. We say the Pledge of Allegiance together. You see me around the neighborhood, and you tell me that I'm a pretty good kid. Well, I'm one out of every five children in America, and I'm struggling with hunger. This problem is closer than you think. My teacher tells me we can grow up to be whatever we want. I want to grow up to be someone who doesn't go to bed hungry. There's enough food in this country to feed everybody. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank for ways to help. Every dollar you donate helps provide eight meals for kids like me, quietly struggling with hunger. Together, we are Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hello, this is Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and I want to tell you about my new favorite discovery, Yosemite National Park. I recently went there with my husband and children, and we walked the trails to see the breathtaking waterfalls, admired the grand meadows, and giant sequoias. But the future of our national parks is uncertain. Many challenges face our parks today, from polluted air and water to development threats outside their borders and inadequate funding to protect our national heritage. That's why the National Parks Conservation Association recently completed a decade-long assessment of the challenges facing our national parks, along with proposed actions that will ensure our children and grandchildren will be able to enjoy the parks as we have. Our national parks have inspired Americans for nearly 100 years. As we approach the centennial of the National Park Service in 2016, please join us in helping to protect our national park legacy. Find out how at www.mpca.org. At the American Lung Association, we're fighting for a day when we can all breathe easier. We're fighting for clear skies over every city and healthy lungs throughout the country. We're fighting to free millions of Americans from the addictive grip of tobacco and the devastating effects of lung disease. The American Lung Association isn't just fighting for air. We're fighting for all the things that make it worth breathing, and we can use your help. See what you can do at fightingforair.org. This is Betty White. I know you don't need one more thing to worry about, but listen. High blood pressure can cause kidney damage, blindness, heart attack, stroke. And you can have high blood pressure even if you feel all right. One in seven adults has it, but it's easy to get your blood pressure checked, and you can treat it if it is too high. So don't worry about it. Don't ignore it. Just see your doctor and check it out. For your free booklet, visit the Will Rogers Institute at wrinstitute.org and find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. Here now is your fabulous host, Mr. Randall White. Welcome to the program, everyone. 9.33, now the time here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Great to have you joining us. I am your host, Randall White, joined by the lovely, talented Patty Pyburn. Good morning. So, Patty, this past week or so, I have been seeing... A deluge in my mm-hmm. Twitter feed of this person, that person nominated for a James Beard Award. Those Very are, nice. Those awards are coming up. And uh, for people that are not familiar with the James Beard Foundation, they are somewhat like the Academy of Motion Pictures mm-hmm. <laughs> who chooses the Oscar nominations, you know, nominees. Right. So the Oscar, the Oscars of food. The Oscars of food. And, uh, it really to have that on your resume as just being a nominee, let alone a winner, right? <laughs> uh, is quite an achievement. To talk a little bit more about the nominees, specifically the ones uh, hailing here from California, is uh, Susan Ungaro, the president of the James Beard Foundation. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Randall and Patty. Yes, yeah, nice to have you with us. Uh, joining us from New York, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yes, I am. You're our second guest on the show today from. Uh, from New York, so uh, welcome. Cold and, cold and sunny. Oh, cold and too. sunny. <laughs> hey, well, that's not too bad. A friend of mine from sh- Chicago who you uh, uh, may know, Bill Daly, he's a writer for the Chicago Tribune, posted a beautiful sure. picture of downtown Chicago the other day, uh, and I, I wrote him a little note, and I said, ooh, springtime in Chicago, I love it. He goes, it's, uh, <laughs> it's 13 degrees out, Randall. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> yeah. So I said, okay, I get it. Uh, oh, at any gosh. rate, um, Susan, is there an unusual number? Does California tend to have a higher percentage of nominees in the James Beard uh, Awards every year? Well, there's no doubt that San Francisco and the Bay Area are very uh, talented. And, you know, besides having great weather, you have a great food a community of great professionals out there. Uh, certainly New York and San Francisco are always very well represented in our James Beard nominees. So give us some of the highlights then. How is California being represented this year? We want to know. Okay, well, there's uh, uh, over a dozen wonderful people being, um, uh, you know, being recognized. Uh, first of all, you have uh, our Lifetime Achievement Award, which is going to be awarded to Cecilia Chang, you know, who is considered the godmother of Chinese cuisine here in America, just like James Beard was considered the godfather of American cuisine. So we're really looking forward to honoring her uh, on May 6th at Lincoln Center. And then a, a wonderful chef whose restaurant I've been to, Michael Mina, is being inducted into our Who's Who. And I, But I think uh, also what's really really exciting for your city is the fact that two restaurants, and only there's only five in the whole country being recognized as a nominee, two San Francisco restaurants are receiving the best new uh, restaurant nomination, State Bird Provisions and Rich Table. Wow. And, yeah, nice. It's, uh, I think it's very exciting, you know, the fact that those restaurants, which are both run by uh, a husband and wife partner teams uh, are really, you know, st- are big standouts this year. And you also have two uh, local uh, men being honored for the Rising Star Chef Award, which recognizes talent under 30 years old. Again, only five in the country and uh, two are from, hail from your area, Danny Bowen of Mission. Yeah, ba- Danny Bowen of Mission Chinese and Thomas McNaughton of Flower and Water. Mission Chinese and Flower and Water are two <laughs> places that are on my list of I have to go visit uh, <laughs> locations, and now I see, now I see why they're being. Now uh, you really do, right? <laughs> in fact, my good friend, my good friend Chris, who's a chef up in the Bay Area, um, sp- speaks highly of Flower and Water all the time, and I, I just love the name of that place. I know that's that's a really yeah. catchy name. Now, the James Beard Foundation does not just recognize chefs, also writers as well. Yes, we also, you know, we recognize great cookbook authors, journalism uh, awards. We have television and broadcast award, web awards. We recognize the best in your industry as well, which is really, uh, you know, very exciting. We On Friday night, uh, May 3rd, we uh, have what we consider the Golden Globes of the uh, food industry, where the media come and, you know, celebrate the excellence in your, in your area. Uh, and I also just want to make sure that you know that uh, in terms of restaurants, Gary Danko, he's, you know, I've been to his oh, restaurant yeah. out in San Francisco. He is uh, nominated for Outstanding Chef. Again, that is, you know, chefs, there's only, there's six of them this year being recognized as nominees in the country. And Charles Fan of the Slanted Door oh. is being um, recognized as a nominee for Outstanding Restaurant. And that, you know, you can't even be considered unless you've been in business for over 10 years. A real sign of success. Gary Danko and uh, the Slanted Door, both fantastic places. I've been to them both. The Slanted mm-hmm. Door, I think, is impressive for a uh, reason <laughs> that I feel like when a when a location is small and then expands and moves, that's typically a death nail. I think <laughs> like it almost right. it almost never works in favor of the restaurant. In uh, the case of the Slanted Door, it. Uh, it went. It happened without a hitch. The quality of the food remained, and the location is so. Obviously, terrific. they're doing something right. People moved with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. An out- outstanding restaurant is really a, a very important award because it recognizes success, long term success in the food world. Mm-hmm. That's a, v- a Vietnamese uh, French restaurant there at uh, the Ferry Plaza. Now, aside yeah. from all these awards, um, which is a, a great function of the foundation, what other types of work? are you all involved with? Well, we, we, our mission is to celebrate and nurture excellence in the food industry and also to nurture the next generation of great chefs and restaurateurs, and we do that by giving out scholarships. We have a mm. very robust scholarship program that is growing year over year. This summer we'll be awarding over a half million dollars in financial aid to uh, deserving students, and the call for those scholarship entries starts next month on our website. And uh, we also, you know, if, if anybody in your area comes to New York City, in the village we uh, have a, a, a restaurant that uh, is 
actually based in James Beard's former townhouse where oh. he was on the Today Show, wrote cookbooks, taught cooking lessons, and anyone can come. And, you know, over 220 days out of the year, we recognize chefs from all over the country who come into a fundraising dinner. It's a very, very special opportunity to recognize great work all around the country. We should mention that jamesbeard.org is the website where you can get this information. We also have a link to that uh, under our program summaries at eatdrinkexplore.com. Just look for today's listings and you'll find the link to uh, jamesbeard.org there. And really cool on the website, I have to say, along with this chance to get what looks like an amazing cookbook, is there's a ton of recipes offered as well. So I like that aspect of your website. Thank you. We have quite a few, uh, over 400 recipes, and they're all tested. So they, you know, as as you probably know in this industry, not every recipe that you read or or, or see is tested. Ours are tested. It really, really works. It can be frustrating. You try it, and it's like, wait, that did not work out the way they said it was going to. Right. Susan, yesterday at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, the uh, newly restored otter exhibit opened to uh, Mm -hmm. fans, and I saw some of the pictures online. Those otters are so unbelievably cute uh, i yes. couldn't help but the pictures grabbed me and i said yeah. okay i'm gonna, pulled you in. I'm gonna go through it <laughs> but last week on the program we had a guest from the monterey bay aquarium and they mentioned that they have a partnership mm-hmm. with you uh regarding sustainability in food that's right one another way that we uh do good work and uh, support our mission is we have uh, an annual food conference and leadership awards. Uh, This will be our third year awarding uh, uh, people and organizations that do great work in the field of making this food world a better, safer place. And the Monterey Bay Aquarium is not only beautiful, I had the pleasure of being there about, well, too long ago, over a decade ago, Mm -hmm. but the people there are really doing great work in making sure that our our seafood and our water uh, are being well taken care of and and need to have a lot more attention focused on on that aspect of sustainability and um, healthy systems in our on our planet. Their seafood watch program is so mm-hmm. helpful and yes. just goes a long way in helping exactly the things you were just talking about. It yeah, it's a nice partnership between um, the science and sustainability and the foodies, so that you know mm-hmm. people can still enjoy but feel like they're doing it responsibly. So that's a nice partnership. I think it's important to be mindful about whatever we consume and how we consume it. Susan, when you go out to eat and or you go to a dinner party and you uh, people know that you're the president of the James Beard Foundation, is that intimidating to them? <laughs> because I, I would be extremely intimidated. I certainly... I certainly hope not. Uh, you know, my, uh, I, I am not a great cook. I'm adequate. I, I'm just like everybody else. I enjoy meeting chefs and sampling new menus. I, you know, when I go into any restaurant, the first thing I look at is the dessert. <laughs> <laughs> That's <All> nice. Right. <laughs> my mother taught me that. Uh, but, you know, I, I, honestly, you know, James Beard uh, lamented in his lifetime that you know people didn't ask him over for dinner because they were afraid to oh. cook for him, and he really. Oh. Really, you know, as 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 he often said, food is our common ground. Yeah. And I think the most important thing is when people come to your home uh, that that you feel comfortable and that you don't never make a recipe that you don't know uh, works. Don't try to impress. Just try to have a good time. <laughs> do, I like do that. what you know. That's smart. Yeah. I like that. Food is our common ground. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, I had a brain shift at one point when I was uh, touring Spain and I went to a restaurant in Seville where uh, there was a table next to us of, I don't know, maybe 10 people or so. Uh, They were there when we got there, and it was clear they had been there a while. And they were there Mm -hmm. when we left, and they weren't finished eating. They weren't rushing to eat. It was more... An experience, right? It was an experience, and it it was a conversation they were having. And I found that at so many restaurants in Spain and I've tried to bring that over to my end of uh, life here in California <laughs> to uh, to turn meals into a conversation a uh, an event I couldn't agree more I married uh, into an Italian family I uh, come from uh, Irish background and we would sit down to, to even a holiday dinner eat and get up and you know I what I loved about my husband's family is that you know they would sit for hours around the table yeah. and certainly I mean in Spain you don't start eating until 10 o'clock at night right. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes on for hours exactly. <laughs> Susan Angaro president of the James Beard Foundation thank you for joining us today Thank you for having me on your show, and all the best to everybody out there. We'll be following those awards. Find out who wins next month. 
We're back in a moment. California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help Populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C A as in California, L U V as in a cute way to spell love.com, and enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C A L U V.com, the California Love Business Recommendation Tool. Hey, Farmer's Market fans, listen up, because we're launching a new show just for you. Join the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network each Thursday evening from 5.30 to 6 for a healthy dose of recipe sharing and food news. We broadcast our show live from the historic downtown San Luis Obispo Farmer's Market, but the information shared is designed for anyone who has a love of fresh, seasonal produce and locally made artisan treats. So whether your favorite market is located at San Francisco's Ferry Plaza in downtown Santa Monica, or if you're simply a member of a CSA, you'll love our weekly Market Fresh, available live each Thursday evening at eatdrinkexplore.com. And if you missed the show, follow our updates on Facebook and Twitter for links to the recipes shared, video from the show, and other great information. Eat, Drink, Explore Radio's Market Fresh, helping perfect your California flavor. Hi, this is Rick Moranis. You know, some people are more careful about what they feed their cars than what they feed their bodies. They know that the wrong fuel can hurt a car's performance and maybe ruin the engine. But the wrong food can have the same effect on your health. Too much fat, too many calories, and too little of what's good for you can affect how well you feel and even lead to serious illness. So eat right. It'll help you keep running smooth. For more information, visit the Will Rogers Institute at WRN. Org or call toll-free 877-957-7575 and find us on Facebook and Twitter. Wayne Brady for the Will Rogers Institute. Hey, folks, I've got something that will truly revolutionize your life. It's called exercise. It will get you from here to there, allow you to spend time with your family and meet new people, cut inches from your waistline, and improve the quality of your life, even help improve your self-image. Sexy. So when you've got to choose between moving around or lying on the couch, choose exercise. You won't be sorry. For your free booklet, visit wrinstitute.com. Or call toll-free 877-957-7575 and find us on Facebook and Twitter. California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California. L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com. And enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. caluv.com. The California Love Business Recommendation Tool. Nine forty nine. Now the time. Time for our final segment of our two hour Eat, Drink, Explore Sunday Fun Day Extravaganza. I'm your host. Randall White joining you each week right here on this station. Patty Pyburn, my lovely co-host. Good morning, everyone, on this Sunday. What a beautiful day we have outside here. Wherever you're listening, if you're listening over the radio, I can guarantee you that you're, you have a nice day on tap <laughs> today. <laughs> uh, here in San Luis Obispo, where we happen to broadcast the show, we're looking for a high of 81 degrees. Lots of sun out there. Nice. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Should be amazing. But uh, throughout the entire Northern California region, coastally, 
it's looking fantastic, even even inland. Hey, we should mention uh, during our last segment, we were talking about the James Beard Award nominees. Mm-hmm. We didn't talk about the actual awards, which will be held at Lincoln Center. She did mention that, but uh, when's the date? It is May 3rd and May 6th. May 3rd and 6th. So I said right at the very end when I was trying to squeeze it in, I said next month, uh, but it's actually the little, next little more than a month. Yeah. Yes. So um, we'll look forward to seeing how many from California turn from nominees to winners. And the event, Randall, in case you want to know, on May 6th is black tie. Oh, yeah. Well, I wouldn't doubt it. Nothing less, uh, <laughs> I would imagine. Okay. So... Uh, for those of you who don't know, I come from a background of uh, managing uh, craft breweries, managing a portion of them, like not mm-hmm. not the general manager, but um, I've worked at uh, Boulder Brewing Company in Boulder, Colorado. That was back in 1990. <laughs> which Wow. And like you a, admit to that? <laughs> I know. It seems like a forever ago. Uh, I moved on to a Marin well. Brewing Company in beautiful uh, Larkspur, California, which, by the way, is the sponsor brewery of the upcoming, I'm not sure how many annual it is now, Breast Fest held in July mm-hmm. uh, in uh, in San Francisco at, the, at Fort Mason. And it raises money for a... Uh, cancer center up there that helps women uh, get beyond the chemotherapy and stuff like that with mm-hmm. uh, you know all sorts of like betterment projects it's a, and and it's specifically women who don't have the funds for those sorts of right, things right right it's a terrific terrific beer festival and we are the uh, media sponsor for it so very nice we'll tell you more about that as uh, the time gets closer but uh i went from marin brewing to las coast brewery up in the north coast Mm -hmm. and then uh, eventually i managed san francisco brewing company uh on columbus street which is now out of business after i left (laughs) (laughs) they just couldn't continue on without you i might add right (laughs) no but all great places to work and I've, i've been a big fan of the craft brewery movement for years now uh you know there was a period in the in the mid nineties mm-hmm. where I felt like maybe we had hit saturation level. Little did I know you had no idea where things were going. It had just begun. Yeah. <laughs> and so, because for instance, to give you an example, I thought it would be great to open a, a microbrewery mm-hmm. brew pub uh, at Lake Tahoe, Tahoe city. And then I saw there was one opening and I thought, Oh, okay, well that area, All right, is, they got it. They done. got it. They have one. I was thinking one per town. Mm-hmm. Wrong. No. <laughs> you, you can have several per town <laughs> yes. now. And uh, so I wish I had that foresight back in the day, but mm-hmm. I didn't. At any rate, new numbers out from the Brewers Association based in Boulder, Colorado, regarding the uh, 2012 explosion of breweries. Uh, just to give you an idea, last year saw 409 new breweries open nationwide, even with clo- closings. Of you know some breweries don't make it. There was a net gain of 366 breweries. So 50 states divided by 50. That's several per state. Wow! Uh, right. Yeah. Throughout the industry, sales rose 17 percent. Any industry that jumps by 17 percent. That's a lot of growth. Clearly, in 1993, they had not hit saturation point. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was so wrong. Uh, <laughs> volume increased by 15 percent. Uh, by comparison, the entire U.S beer industry, commercial mm-hmm. breweries included, volume increased by 1%. So wow. it shows you that it's a big difference. the drinkers are gaining on the craft side. And, right. And the large breweries like Anheuser-Busch, InBev, and, and such, Coors, Miller Coors, they know that that's... They are trying to way. tap into that, so to speak. Because <laughs> they are offering specialty products they now are. that uh-huh. i think are trying to kind of don't be fooled by shock top or uh what's the other is one? It blue moon blue moon yeah. blue moon is the miller course shock top is the imbev they are trying to appeal to people who want that kind of micro brew feel so. yeah uh-huh when you go into a bar ask the bar talk to your bartender just like you would yeah. at a farmer's market and say know your brewer know your brewer and say <laughs> what what do you have that is produced mm-hmm. locally if you ask what a what micro breweries? What micro brews do you have? Are craft beers you have on draft? And they tell you, oh, we've got shock top. Then your bartender, they're like, wait, okay, hold that on. That tells you a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you might be in the wrong place. Is you what might I could be. be telling you. <laughs> right. Exactly. So uh, on, I might be changing topics too soon, but in this vein, um, remember Figueroa Mountain? Yeah. Brewing yes. in uh, the Bielton. yeah in the Bielton era. That's what I was going to say. 
Have you heard about the new place there? And I think they have sort of a collaboration with uh, Figueroa, this Ascendance uh, Distillery. I have heard about Ascendance Distillery, but tell me, I don't know anything about it other than I know that well, it's there. First legal distillery in Santa Barbara County. First ever? Since Prohibition. Since Prohibition. Mm-hmm. Wow. So um, this is this ain't moonshine. Here's another guest idea. Hold on, I got to write. Uh-huh. It. <laughs> write <laughs> it I know you probably do want to uh, speak to the man behind this, and I'm looking for his name, Steve Gertman. Uh huh. He is the master distiller. Okay. So they are making Breaker Bourbon Whiskey, mm-hmm. American Star Vodka, Silver Lightning Moonshine, Single Malt Whiskey, and Rye. They have plans to collaborate. With uh, Figueroa Mountain. Mm-hmm, good. And um, Jamie, Jamie there, uh, Dietenhofer, I think is the last name. Perhaps make beer into whiskey. Yeah, well, that's the that's basically... The next step. Mm-hmm. It's just like grape juice makes wine. Beer is basically mm-hmm. your start for whiskeys and bourbons. Yeah, so, so. there could be some collaboration there. Uh, yeah, they have this huge facility, 3,300 square foot facility where they are making... Uh, it says they have a 70, 755 gallon mash cooker. Nice. 500 gallon copper still and four open top fermenters. Holy moly. They have a big operation going there. Yeah. This is the big week, by the way, for all those craft lovers of uh, beer. It is the. Um the big at the Washington Convention Center there in Washington D.C. It's the Craft Brewers Conference. Ooh, interesting. I went through the pictures from the Beer Association, Brewers Association rather, from like last year's conference. Mm-hmm. It was hard to find women in the pictures, and I hope that changes. I want to yeah. see that change. And I, we had a guest on a while back, it was specifically geared for women we did. beer makers. Uh-huh. So it's, pink boots. Yeah, out of uh, <laughs> they're Portland. out there. They're mm-hmm. out there, and I I assume. There will be more since we we know what we're doing, Randall. No, I know. <laughs> I worked for a couple of pioneering women up mm-hmm. there at Lost Coast Brewery who make some of the best beer in the country, and uh, there's there's no reason for it. There there needs to be a shift mm-hmm. when it comes to that. We also had uh, the women winemakers. Yes, we did. Uh, yeah, on as well. So we're always trying to uh, shed some light in that region. All right, well, this wraps up another edition of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio for this uh, Sunday. It is March the 24th. You can hear all of our segments, if you missed any of them, uh, from this week or previous weeks at eatdrinkexplore.com. Get out there. Make it a great day, everyone. We'll catch you back here next week. You've been listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you missed any of our segments today, look for them online or through our free Apple and Android apps. Catch you back right here next week.